Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Salon Marketing Live. I'm Stephanie Mitchell and I'm so excited today because I have a special guest with us today, Shauna Dexter. Hi, Shauna. Hi, Stephanie. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited to talk about today's topic, which is all about collaboration over competition in the beauty industry. Such an important topic, something that I know you're very passionate about, something that's helped you and your business and your journey as a business person. Um, so we're going to talk about um, how to get over your fear of competition, why that fear is probably hurting you more than you think that it is. And then the other side of the coin, which is how collaborating with other businesses, especially businesses that are actually in the same niche as you, how collaborating them can with them can actually help to build your business, which is so exciting and something that you have personal experience with. So yes, I'm so happy that you're here. Um, Shauna, thank you so, so, so much. Um, so go ahead and introduce yourself. Tell us about um, yourself and your business and what you do, Shauna. Okay, well, I'm Shauna Dexter. I live in Olathe, Kansas, which is a suburb of Kansas City. And um, much like I feel like many people in my industry, which is spray tanning, mm -hmm. actually, um, I started my journey in the entrepreneurial world as a side gig. Um, I went to college. That was what was expected of me. Mm -hmm. Kind of took a roundabout way of graduating. It took me about seven years. <laughs> what did you study? Get, I studied marketing. So me too. how convenient. Yes. Um, and once I finally graduated, I ended up doing professional services marketing at an engineering firm. And really, frankly, enjoyed my job. It, there was nothing wrong with my job. Mm -hmm. um, but when I got into my mid thirties, my oldest stepson was getting ready to go off to college. And my husband and I were kind of looking at each other like, how do we pay for this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, he was the first of three and it, reality started to set in that yeah. we didn't know how we were going to afford it. So I was like, I'm going to get a side gig. And you know, for me, that meant like probably waiting tables or something like that. Mm -hmm. But around the same time, I started getting spray tans and they were lacking. <laughs> um, if I had a great outcome from, you know, the tan and it looked great, then the experience was lacking. Right. If I had an okay experience, then the tan was bad. Mm -hmm. So I never really had the whole thing put together. And something just hit me one morning after an appointment. And I called my husband and said, I'm going to be a spray tanner. And I had no idea what that meant. But I knew that by starting my own thing, I could work around my schedule and my mm -hmm. family schedule, I could still work my eight to five job and pay the bills, but maybe save some money um, on the side. Yeah. So that's how many what years I did. ago was this? That was July 2011. I launched Recreating Rays, and um, I've been at it ever since. Launched so, it in my basement. <laughs> so you've been doing this for eight years, which actually in the spray tan community is quite a bit of time because there's so many businesses that have been coming around in the last few years. But like eight years almost makes you like a little bit of a veteran. <laughs> Especially in the Midwest, you know, yeah. on the coast. Um, it was a little more established mm -hmm. by then. Um, but here, really, I had, I think, about two competitors, maybe three when mm -hmm. I opened my business. And so it was easy to jump into the market and start rolling and getting things going. Yeah. And um, there wasn't the competition that there is today. So. Yeah. yeah. So what does your business look like today? And um, tell us also a little bit about like what you've been doing recently um, with the Association of Sunless Tanning Professionals. Yeah, so today my business is insane. It's insane in a great way. We have grown tremendously from um, my it being a side gig in my basement that I worked three hours a night to becoming self-employed in 2014. Um, which I got completely smacked down then learned all the things that I did not know about being a business owner mm -hmm. real quick when I became self-employed, um, ended up going back to my old job part time and then launched ASTP in 2015, um, which is association of sunless tanning professionals. Yes. 
It's just a community of sunless tanners um, from all over the world now. We have people from, I believe, six different countries right now Mm -hmm. um, represented in our member base. And then I also started Sunless Summit, which is our annual event that we host each year. And I started that in 2017. So 2020 will be our um, fourth year of doing that. And you have been a speaker at Sunless Summit. Yeah, That's I have been. My world. <laughs> I have been. And it's so exciting. It's such a cool event. And I love the fact that essentially you've taken what many people consider to be like a very small niche in the beauty industry Mm -hmm. and made it so it's just like so open and so helpful to other people instead of looking at it as like a scarcity mindset of, oh, no, 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 we already have a tanning business in this region. I don't want any more competition. Instead, it's just people in the same industry and the same city even sometimes lifting each other up. Well, and that's, you know, I can say specifically, I have four people who are members of ASTP that would be considered my local competition in my market. So not only are we out there trying to grab the same customer base, Mm -hmm. but they are a part of my group. And I try to share openly in that group, very openly. Um, And I think that's the biggest, one of the bigger and not being so afraid of competition is, you know, we're all going to do things a little bit differently. So it doesn't matter if you all have the same information, what's meant for you will come for you. Yes. And so I love that. So I want to go further into like, let's talk about this competition versus collaboration. Let's talk Mm -hmm. about the mindset um, that's required. Um, I just wanted to jump quickly into the comments. Um, Guys, if you're watching live or even if you're watching as a replay, please jump in, say hi, tell us where you're watching from, tell us what kind of business you have. We would love to hear from you. Um, So Lisa's here, Angie says, yes, Fabiola's here. She says, love the story, Shauna. And Amanda's here as well. Hi, Amanda. She says, hey, ladies, thank you for watching, Amanda. Um, Guys, (laughs) pop into the comments, say hi. We'd love to know all about you and what you do and just to hear from you. So. Um, Okay, so Shauna, you said um, when we were getting ready for this uh, interview and when you were posting about this interview, I read something in your post that uh, it made me so, so, so interested. She said, Shauna said that she's had a mindset shift in her business as a business owner that allowed her not only to grow a community of sunless tanning professionals from zero to hundreds of people in the same industry, but in her own business, Recreating Rays, she has her own sunless studio. She's She said that this mindset shift has helped explode her own sunless business by over 125% in the last two years alone. So that's incredible. And she she's doing multiple six figures in her business. So Shauna, tell us a little bit about what this kind of mindset shift was and exactly like how it's helped you to grow your business in such a big way. Right. So I think much like anyone else, when I came in to um, this business and I became an entrepreneur, I was obsessed with my competition. Hmm. Like literally I would stalk them on the internet and Probably some of this are some of them are going to see this. And that's <laughs> Maybe really they won't know that you're referring to them specifically, but <laughs> it's really embarrassing to say out loud. But I think what I was doing, and it's something that we see all the time with social media now, is like this comparison syndrome mm-hmm. of I would go on their website and I would again, so embarrassing, but I would go to book an appointment with them just to see how many appointments they had available, okay? (laughs) Do you have an empty schedule or are you totally booked up? Exactly, and because I knew what was happening in my business and I was so driven and I was just striving for what in my mind was happening in their business, right? So, Why do you think they were so obsessed with them? You know, I have no idea. I think it was a fear. It was a fear-based, thought of, you know, if they're doing so much better than me, you know, I'm never going to make it. I'm never going to be able to succeed in this market. And so it was really easy to just slip into this negative mindset of, oh, they're doing so much better 
and they've been around for four years already. Why would anybody come to me? You know, so frankly, I was pretty negative when I started my business. Essentially thinking like, well, if they have lots of clients coming in, that means that they're taking clients away from me. Yeah. How am I going to get these people to come try me? And, you know, spray tanning is very niche industry and it is a very, um, for the most part, special occasion thing. Most people are not spray tanning weekly or bi-weekly. They're spray tanning two to three times a year, right. which means you have to capture thousands of people to be able to do you know, six figures in revenue or whatever your goal may be. And that reality you know, set in with me really yeah. quick. And so I think I was just afraid. I was afraid that I was wasting my time Um, and so I would just go and see like what, how I thought I was doing compared to them. Yeah. So essentially you were like measuring yourself up against them. For sure. For sure. And then, um, I did Marie Forleo B school way back when I believe in 2012, Mm -hmm. um, literally every penny I made in business, I reinvested into my education. Um, because even though I have a marketing degree, uh, there was no internet when I went to college. Yeah, <laughs> like, I know. I feel really I feel like traditional education is like so behind in so many ways. <laughs> and so I had to relearn everything. Yeah. Um, and so I remember Marie saying, "Like you are the only you." She's she says that all the time, and nobody else can be you. So just be yourself. Put yourself out there, and again, what's meant for you will find you. And I started trusting that and believing that because the comparison syndrome was doing nothing but depressing me Mm -hmm. and making me anxious and contributing to anxiety in my life. So I really decided to take that to heart and I took a step back and I just stopped and literally I can't tell you today how much my competitors charge for a spray tan, um, how many I have. That's probably not good, but I really... (laughs) I found my lane and I am staying in it. And um, then when we talk collaboration, you know, Amanda, who is probably watching. Yeah, this, Amanda's watching. <laughs> she, she changed everything for me. Yeah, and tell us about that. Like how, tell us this story about Amanda and like what, who, first of all, who is Amanda? Who Amanda. was she to you? And then how did you end up collaborating with her? So when I launched ASTP in 2015, Amanda was one of the first people to join. And she was from Gardner, Kansas, which is about 15 minutes south of me. Um, Now, in our metro area at that time, again, we didn't have a lot of competition. So I would have considered her my competition because there's just not that many of us. Um, So after she joined, she asked me if I would have coffee taken aback. Um, but again, if I'm going to promote this collaboration and not being afraid of your competition, then I'm going to sure have coffee with her and answer her questions. Yeah. And we met and kind of the rest is history. This girl, like she didn't pry too much. She asked general questions. I helped her in a way that felt really good to me. Mm-hmm. Um, and never felt like she never felt pushy yeah like she was trying to get all the details out of me she just had general questions about starting her business and running her business and i gave her some ideas and then we went our separate ways well and then about a year later was when i had the first sunless summit and she was one of the first people to sign up Mm -hmm. and she offered to help me there with registration and things like that I immediately took her up on it because I could use all the help I could get. Yeah. And she and I kind of figured out there in that time, um, we're good at very different things. You know, I saw how organized she is in type A and I am everything, you know, opposite of that. (laughs) I am beyond um, disorganized but very um, creative, big thinker. Yeah. And she can get down and hammer into the details. Um, what that led to was me just saying, hey, you know, we open, we just opened this spray tanning studio. We could use some seasonal help. 
Um, I know you've got your own thing. I have no intention of you walking away from that. But if you would like to help us Mm -hmm. here and there, you know, it could be a a little extra cash for you. And she dove in and I taught her everything I know. Um, And when that happened, um, again, it was over the course of a few months, but I learned that I could really trust this woman Mm -hmm. with like everything I had. She proved that to me over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, um, last year I made the decision and it was scary for me, but I asked her to step away from her own business, infinite tan and to join me in recreating rays and to become um, my brand manager. Yeah. I knew that in order to grow in the way that I wanted to, and for me to be able to step away and devote more time to ASTP, I needed help. Um, it was really hard to ask somebody to give up their own dream. Mm-hmm. And it felt very wrong of me <laughs> to do that. But I put it out there. She took a while to think about it and we've been working together. She's been my brand manager for a year now. And I will tell you that our, you know, 80% plus growth this year is thanks to Amanda. It's thanks to having her on my team and us being able to balance each other out and collaborate in a really unique way. Yeah, I love that. So you've had amazing growth in your business in the past few years. And you said that a huge amount of this growth is because you've changed that mindset. Not only have you like had a a mindset of abundance, which for sure has allowed you to make more money and have more clients, but also just like being creative about, okay, where do I want my business to go? And then how can I collaborate with other people to help it go in that direction? Right. And realizing that, you know, no matter what, I'm one person and I can only do so many things. And that was a hard realization for a lot of us. Mm -hmm. I think it's very scary to bring people onto your team and to trust them with your baby and what you've built over, you know, four or five, six years. And then to say, okay, here you go. I'm handing this to you on a silver platter and I'm going to really hope you don't drop it. And, but I think when you go into it with an open heart, And you realize um, you have to be smart about it, though, too. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't trust everybody, um, but trust your gut. And when something feels right, it's easy to say, okay, why don't I let you be good at what you're good at? I'll go do what I'm good at and let's see what happens. And that's exactly what's happened over the last year. And we have, I mean, exploded. Because I'm all over the place. I will open 14 locations and add 12 (laughs) services. And I have a new idea every day. And Amanda will (laughs) reel me back in. She balances you. Slow your roll. You promise me no new locations (laughs) and no new services while we figure this all out this year. You know, So um, it's a balancing act. And it has way benefited my company. Oh, that's awesome. Um, I just wanted to jump back into the comments here just to say hi to everyone who's watching. Amanda says, love you both. Uh, Lisa (laughs) says, can't wait to see you at the summit. Michelle is here. Hi, Michelle. Shannon's here. Um, Lisa's watching from Shreveport. Thanks for letting us know. Nicole is here from uh, Florida. Uh, She says, hi, Shauna. Ava's here watching from Las Vegas. Rachel is here. Shout out to Mandalay Mist in Tampa, Florida. <laughs> Michelle's watching from New Hampshire. Fabiola is also in Miami oh Beach. We've got lots of people from Florida here. Nicole said, <laughs> I've had this feeling before. Like, is this really going to make me a good living? As soon as I doubt something great happens. Um, Nicole says, I let go of comparison the past year. And after AT- ASTP Summit last year, I was renewed. So just like those huge mindset shifts, that, which is so important. Um, Amanda says, love you so much, girl. And Angie's here watching from Toronto. Hi, Angie. Thanks for being here. Um, so guys who just commented or anyone else new who just joined us, let me know in the comments what has been kind of your experience with competition like do you feel like you kind of obsess a little bit over your competition maybe a little bit more than you think that you should do you feel like you really put your blinders on and stay in your lane and don't watch the competition or do you feel like you've got like a healthy relationship 
just let me know what your experience has been um, in the comments. No judgment at all, either way. Um, <laughs> I personally, is something that I'm dealing with all the time. I feel like when things in my business are really good, it's easy for me to just like stay in my lane and like put on my blinders and just focus. But when I have a few like, you know, uh, obstacles or when things aren't going really the way that I want them to, then I feel like it's easy to get pulled into that. Like, you know, you're looking at other people on Instagram and you're seeing how everyone else is doing and you're focusing more on them than on the action that you should be taking. So I'm sure that it's something that, you know, we all deal with at certain times in our life. Of course. And I think it's naive to think that um, you know, everything's always going to be sunshine and rainbows mm -hmm. when it comes to competition because things can be ruthless in the beauty industry. You know, I think about hairdressers or, you know, people who are literally feet away from their competition yeah. in their salon, you know, and I try to stay, um, you know, thinking about those things because in spray tanning, it is a new industry it is a um, very low barrier to entry. So people are starting spray tanning businesses at like this astronomical rate yeah. and there's no licensing requirement. And so anybody can do it. You can buy your spray equipment on Amazon, get you some solution, pop up a tent and you're a spray tanner now. Yeah. That's a good thing and a bad thing. Um, double edged sword. So I think it's naive to think that, you know, everybody's going to love their competitors and we're all going to, you know, sing Kumbaya together. <laughs> um, but it can happen and yeah. you can collaborate with those people and you can find people in your niche who maybe aren't next door, but maybe a little further away that you can collaborate with and share ideas with. So Yeah, I, I love that idea so much. So Shauna, can you tell us a little bit about like some of the ways that you suggest that business owners can, first of all, start to look around at who they could collaborate, first of all, mm -hmm. without getting obsessed with it. And then maybe some of the ways that you, that it's a good idea to kind of start a collaboration. Like what kind of collaborations have you seen people doing? Right. I think, you know, number one is don't be afraid to ask. Mm -hmm. And that's how Amanda and I ended up working together. She asked me, you know, something that was scary for her because she thought I was just going to shut her down and say no way and, you know, um, keep all this information to myself because I worked so hard to gain all this information over five years. Mm -hmm. um, but I think you have to open yourself up and not be afraid to ask somebody yeah. for help or ask for an idea or ask somebody if they're willing to collaborate with you. Um, Sunless Summit has fostered relationships that I have watched just blossom over the last several years. Mm -hmm. And it's the most rewarding thing I've done in my life, frankly, is seeing these women start to come together and they are working together and they may be on opposite coasts or whatever, but they're, talking and sharing ideas and they're not afraid to share their knowledge yeah or to share if you've been in the industry for eight years you know not necessarily afraid to share with somebody who just started and say oh you know I had to take my lumps and bumps and you you got to do the same go serve yeah. your time you know yeah um there's so much that we can collaborate on and everybody's gonna have a little bit different take on it and how you do things is going to be a little different and then what connects with your customer base is going to be a little bit different mm -hmm. so I think it's you know really don't be afraid to ask and that happened with me with um, Alicia at Spree Studio in Atlanta this year we're trying to figure out how to run our studio more efficiently and this chick is like busting out tans every 15 minutes yeah. and I'm like oh my gosh so I you see do her that. doing that and you're like oh can can we chat like I would love to learn from you and so we took a trip to Atlanta and Amanda and I got on an airplane and went down there and spent a day at Alicia's studio and saw how that ran and Alicia was more than happy to allow us to do that mm -hmm. and was accommodating and answered you know all of our questions and ultimately what we figured out is that doesn't work for us and that's not going to be what we do, right. but we can probably find a happy medium. And, but had we not had that opportunity, 
we probably would have gone for it. Yeah. And we probably would have realized real quick, like, oh, we're driving ourselves into the ground and this does not work for our business. Right. Um, but because we had that um, opportunity, we were able to learn and now apply what will work for us. So yeah. I think the biggest thing is just being open and not being afraid to ask someone for some help. Yeah, when you need help. And when you when you specifically are like struggling with something that you know that another business owner has been through, like experience is the best teacher. Like you don't have for to sure. struggle through that alone by yourself. Right, and you know, there will be people who will tell you, you know, I had to do it the hard way, so do you. Um, that's just reality. And you yeah. may get, you know, have some people shush you away. But you will probably be surprised how many people would be happy to mentor you or take you under their wing, or at least at the very least, just, you know, get on a 30 minute phone call and say fire away and let me tell you what I know. Yeah, I love that. So essentially, like if so for people who are watching, and they're thinking like, okay, I, I think that I want to be like Shauna and embrace, you know, the competition instead of mm -hmm. instead of seeing it as competition, seeing it as just, you know, a way to grow your business. If someone's thinking that they want to do that, I guess probably you would say like the first step for them is just to have that mindset shift of like letting go of that negativity and bringing in more abundance. Second of all, you said, um, just ask, like, don't be afraid to go and talk with people. Do you have any other advice for like practical steps that some someone can do for having a collaboration or maybe some ideas that you've seen of like businesses coming together and collaborating? I mean, whether they're in the same niche or knit, I guess in America right. we say knit, niche. <laughs> <laughs> whether they're in the same niche or not. Um, for sure, we collaborate with other business owners you know, often in our business. And like, for instance, last week, we did an Instagram giveaway with um, a hair and makeup artist mm -hmm. and a photographer. And so we gave away with them um, a spray tan, teeth whitening, hair and makeup, and a 30 minute photo session. I love and that. And it was awesome. a great way to, for all of us to build our audience and, you know, bring, you know, we have similar customer bases. So yeah. here, let me share mine with you and you share yours with me. Um, and so we've done that. We work Did with, you, sorry to interrupt you, but for no, that, no. Uh, you said it was on Instagram. Did you guys do mm -hmm. like, um, uh, in order to enter this competition, you have to follow these to follow all, Okay. Follow all three of us. Yeah. And yeah, you know, we knew that you'll, you'll always have a little bit of fall off of your followers after that, but people who are going to participate in that are typically people who are interested in what you have to offer. Yeah. Um, so we gained, I think, you know, close to 200 new followers last that's week awesome. from that. And that's literally giving away $150 in services. Yeah. So something like that is great. You just want to make sure that the people you're working with, um, that their values and their customer base align yeah. with your own. Mm -hmm. That's obviously super important. Um, you also got to remember it's give and take. It's not take and take. Yeah. And, um, you know, you've got to offer something, you know, put, put something on the line as well in a lot of these situations. Yeah. And for us, the biggest thing we have um, grown from in the last two years has been working with influencers mm -hmm. and that's a col collaborative effort always yeah and they have changed my business um one in particular who just loves us and we love her because we are getting you know anywhere from 70 to 100 new clients every um quarter just from wow. her is she and, like a local blogger like an instagram yeah. influencer kind of thing yeah, and she honest, she's in the health and wellness field. She's not even a beauty um, or fashion girl. Mm -hmm. She's a dietitian, <laughs> and I think it. She's very relatable, and because she's not a beauty blogger, people really trust her when she says, "You know, this is the place. This place is the jam. Yeah, um, this is where you need to go." 
And so that's a very collaborative effort too with between me and her and then the other few other influencers or bloggers we work with, that's awesome. you know, to say, we need your help and we'll give you some free services yeah. or, you know, sometimes it's cash. You, you bring me new clients. I give you a referral fee. Yeah. So that's- it's all working together and finding what works for you. That is such a good idea. I love the idea of the competition, um, you know, finding local businesses who have the same type of audience, have the same type of values as you, and you can collaborate with them together. You can grow your audiences and you're only like giving away, like you said, you were giving away like $150 worth of spray tans, but you were getting not only the 200 followers, but like those all thousands of other followers from the other accounts that are getting aware of you and kind of that exposure as well. And then um, the idea of having an influencer working with you is so cool. It's such a fun idea. Um, Totally recommend it. And I mean, you've seen for yourself, Shauna, how much um, how much business it's brought you. That's so, so, so cool. Um, So I just wanted to pop back into the comments here. Michelle says, absolutely do the same as Shauna did. It's an obsession because of social media. It makes it so easy to see what they're doing. So what you used to do and what I still Mm -hmm. uh, struggle, sometimes (laughs) struggle with is like checking out the competition on Instagram. Like it's so tempting, Michelle, you are not alone. Um, Angie says, I wish spray tanning was regulated in my province because some new slash poorly trained girls give established spray tanners a bad rep. Some of the bad tan stories I hear make me cringe. Yeah, so maybe you could speak on that, Shauna, about like- Can I talk about that for Yes, (laughs) um, embracing the competition and and being more collaborative, even when you feel like there are other people in your industry that might be hurting um, the image of whatever you're doing. We all struggle with that, and that is not going anywhere. Um, Because we are in an unlicensed industry, that is just something you have to accept. Mm-hmm. It is our job as spray tanning professionals, and i that's why I chose that word. We are spray tanning professionals. Um, you know, it is our job to show our clients what this can be. Yeah. You cannot be worried about, you know, somebody who's doing a spray tan in their garage um, or whatever it may be. There's a client for them. There is a person who really doesn't care about their outcome, who is money driven and cost driven. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. That is not who you want as your client long term. It's true. And so you have to accept that there's somebody over here doing this. Yes, I know it can be irritating. um, But frankly, I started in my basement. I'm sure people thought, who is this crazy lady having people come to her house in her basement (laughs) and like slapping some spray tanning solution on them? Yeah. Um, But you know what? Like I look at what I've done over the last eight years with that. You never know where those people are going to end up. Mm -hmm. And you know, anybody can do a $20 spray tan. That's fine. Let them do a $20 spray tan. Stay in your lane, do what you do, do it well. And people will find you and people will come to you who, you know, value what you do. Yeah. And those are the clients you want. You want somebody who values what you have to offer, Mm -hmm. not who values price. Yeah. If that's what, you know, they're doing. It's hard. And, you know, but again, pros and cons to being in an unlicensed industry. When you take on licensing, um, that's just a whole new bag of worms and a lot of things that a lot of people have to deal with. So yeah. We and gotta, even, even if you're in an industry that's licensed, that doesn't mean right? that all professionals that are in your same city are going to have the same standard of quality as you. It can still become a problem, even if oh, sure. you know, whatever kind of niche you're in. I mean, you looking at other people and saying like, Oh, I wish like I, that hurts my eyes. Like it's, it's hurting my, it's hurting my reputation. <laughs> I mean, you do have to kind of like, separate yourself from that regardless for sure and I think it's um there's something for everyone there's a client for everyone yeah and you know there's nothing wrong with someone who wants a $20 spray tan let them go get their $20 spray tan yeah if they if they're not if they're happy with it cool I'm happy with that too yeah and you just gotta let them go do their thing and 
you have your own standards. Mm -hmm. it, that may not be what you would choose, but that's, again, that's not your client. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. Good, good call. Um, so uh, Rachel says, the reason I reached out to, uh, you were the reason I reached out to a close sunless sister to help cover my maternity leave. Mm. Yeah, that's so sweet. <laughs> so another way of collaborating when you need help, when um, right. maybe you're not able to take a client or even for a period of time you're not available, it's so nice to have other people that you can recommend your clients to. Um, for sure. We have um, Andrea. Uh, she is a local competitor. She's also a member of ASTP. And when she goes on vacation, she refers her clients to us because she knows I'm not going to try to sit over here and tell these people why they should be coming to us instead of Andrea. Yeah. No, that's not how we roll. We're all supportive. Let me give you a great tan. Andrea will be back next week and she'll continue to take great care of you. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that that gives both your clients and their clients just such a great impression of both businesses. It's like, sure. wow, these ladies have so much confidence in what they're doing that I just feel like love and support everywhere. Like I don't feel like they're in competition with each other and that, yeah, for your clients, that gives them such a great impression as well. Well, and it could be super awkward. <laughs> like you come in here and we're like, well, you know, we do this and this and this yeah. and you know, that's not comfortable for anyone. And you know, so I think just always staying above, rising above the bar and saying, mm -hmm. you know what, thank you for trusting me and thank you for trusting us yeah. to treat your clients well. That That's the biggest compliment you can give me. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, so Maria says, I've been in the business for only a year. I tried to reach out to a person who's been in the business for 10 years. She wasn't responsive at all. She didn't understand why I had called her, not the reaction I was hoping for. I have moved on. And now I ask as many questions as I can through Instagram. People have been so nice. So I'm glad that you found some, some help. And Maria, not everyone. I mean, even if you've been in the industry for a long time, not everyone has that same philosophy of, you know, acceptance and support and love and collaboration. I mean, exactly. <laughs> and you can't expect them to. Yeah. You know, we have worked hard and we have spent a lot of money and we have learned the hard way on a lot of these things. And some people are really protective of that. And they're yeah. like, you know what? Nope. I'm over here doing my thing. And you have to go struggle and find your way. Yeah. That's fine. Let them be that way. Um, that's why, you know, I have ASTP and that's why I created it is because I believe there are hundreds and thousands of people out there who are willing to collaborate mm -hmm. and share. People like Fabiola. Yeah. Hey, Fabi. Hey, hi, um, Fabiola. <laughs> who are willing to share the information mm -hmm. and what has worked for them in their years and years and years of experience. Yeah. So you will encounter that I hope to say more often than you encounter the other, but you can't expect everyone to be, you know, buddy, buddy, because that's just not reality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Nicole says, uh, oh, Lisa says me too, sister. And then Nicole said, spent a day with Jenna Melberg. She has been so helpful. She is 45 minutes away from me. I guess that's somebody else in ASTP. Yes. Yes, and Jenna is uh, one of our um, advisory board members, and she is amazing. And that's what it's all about for me right there. Hearing mm -hmm. that is what makes me keep going when this seems like an insurmountable um, task and hill I'm trying to climb is hearing that those women have come together and shared something and that that's so rewarding. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Nicole. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Michelle says Lisa friend, but at the same time, I do refer clients to them if they're unavailable. So she was just replying back to somebody mm -hmm. else. Rachel says, preach it. Fabiola says you can always ask us and we'll help in whatever you need. So Maria, if you want to reach out to Fabiola, she's so open and kind, um, and she would love to help you. So if you, if you want to reach out, definitely feel free. Um, guys, if you have any other questions for Shauna, please jump into the comments and ask. And if you're watching this as a replay, jump into the comments and ask anyway, uh, because um, we'll check the comments afterwards and reply back to as many things as we can. So jump into the comments. I'm gonna ask Shauna one more question and then I'll go back into your comments. Um, Shauna, 
Final question for you from me is, um, it seems like in your eight years in the beauty industry, you've grown so much as a person, you've grown as a business owner. Um, you took Marie Forleo's course and she told you <laughs> that thing that just kind of changed your mindset about right. um, competition. Um, what other mindset shifts or like growth have you had in your mindset in the past eight years and how have they helped you with your business? I think definitely um, the transition from coming from a place of lack to a place of abundance, Mm -hmm. um, realizing there is more than enough to go around. Like I said, because we're in an industry um, specifically that's really tough where you don't have someone coming to see you every month or six weeks or eight weeks to get their hair done or every two weeks to get their nails done or anything like that. It's mostly, um, you know, special occasion type stuff. Mm -hmm. It's tough to feel like there's going to be enough. Yeah. But there is, it just takes time. And that's been, you know, a really big light bulb for me is, you know, referrals drive business you got to have a lot of people before you're getting those referrals yeah. just constantly. And so it just takes time. And if you're not passionate about this, if you don't, if this is not what you were put on this earth to do and you're doing it for a buck, you will fall by the wayside in a year, maybe two. There's nothing wrong with that either. Um, but I think probably the biggest realization I came to a few years ago with especially the the mindset shift around competition is that my dreams are no more valid than anyone else's dreams. Mm. And my dream is the same as a lot of other people's dreams. There is nothing that says that I deserve that more than they do. So when people come to me who may be my local competition or like, hey, I'd love to meet up and talk about this or whatever, I'm always going to be open to that. If you rub me the wrong way, okay, I may put up a wall. But if we can have an open and collaborative and heart to heart discussion, um, I really truly believe that, you know, what I want in my life um, is no more valid than what you want in your life. Yeah. And I don't deserve it any more than you do. Yeah. And so we will both find a way to get there if that's what is meant for us. So, you know, that's the biggest thing for me. My dream is no more valid than anyone else's. Yeah, I love that. So essentially, like, what that means to you is that we all have our own journey. We all have our own way Mm -hmm. of doing business. And it's not that someone intrinsically deserves something more than somebody else. Right. And if you're willing to put in the work and to achieve something even greater than what I can or what I have or what I want. That is, that's phenomenal. Great, great for you. Um, Go get it sister. (laughs) You know, it's really where I come from now. I'm a big cheerleader. I, I love cheering people on and seeing them succeed. Yeah. I love that. And that so comes across in what you do. You're so positive. You're so, Thank you're you. such a sweet lady. I, I, I've loved this chat so much, Shauna. Um, Thank you. Guys, uh, if you haven't jumped into the comments yet, if you're being a little bit quiet, jump in, uh, tell us what you thought. Tell us like, have you had any kind of like ideas or shifts in your mind watching this interview of like, okay, I feel like I need to be more collaborative. I feel like I need to be more positive. I feel like in general, I just need to accept abundance and stop thinking about this scarcity of like, oh, if they have clients, then I can't, or um, they're going to steal all the business from me, that kind of thing. It's, it's, it's not, it's not serving your business. And I think that it, those kind of thoughts also end up limiting what you do for your own business too, because you're, you're acting more out of fear than um, out of possibility so well and I think it's important to be really clear about what you want and what you are striving toward because it Mm -hmm. while you may be in the same um niche as someone else you know we may all be spray tanners but what we want out of this career is completely different and our expectations of ourselves and 
what we're trying to achieve, it's all different. So then it makes it way easier to collaborate, way easier to think with an open mind. Mm -hmm. And when you realize that, you know, yeah, we all do the same thing, but we all have a little bit different perspective on it. Yeah. Yes. Keep an open mind. Yep. And no one is you. I mean, we all do business in such a, yep. in such a unique way. And even for even if you're providing like the same services, for example, a huge amount of your clients will come to you simply because of you, because of your personality and no one else can be you. I mean, be you're you. so, uh, that is such a huge differentiator too, is just your personality and your character, et cetera. Um, Nicole says, I need to accept abundance. So I, I feel like that's a lesson that we can all learn, Nicole. Get on it, girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely <laughs> doing that myself. Um, Ava had a question. She said, um, you mentioned needing a lot of people to get business because your business is for special occasion. What's the first thing you did to grow your customer base when you were first starting out? So ads, events, et cetera. Okay, so when <laughs> when I started, there was no Instagram, um, which is just mind boggling to yeah. me that, you know, there was barely a Facebook. Um, nobody was really using Facebook for business. They were a little bit here and there, but I used Google ads initially to grow my clientele. Mm -hmm. And now today, that would be the last thing I would tell somebody to do because it's highly competitive. But yeah. back then I didn't have competitors in Google ads. I could spend a couple bucks a day and get three new clients. Sweet. That's a great ROI. Um, I would say today, um, working with influencers or bloggers or local people has definitely changed our business. It has helped us grow um, astronomically. And again, we finally have, you know, enough people coming through our doors every year that, you know, every new client is potentially three more. Yeah. And um, the referrals outpace everything else for us now mm -hmm. as far as advert or new, qual new client acquisition. Yeah. So our referrals are number one. Instagram is number two. Um, Facebook is number three. Yelp is number four. And then... Or no, I take that back. Instagram, Google, Facebook, and, um, and then Yelp at the bottom of the list. But referrals is definitely up there. And Google now with Google Places or Google My Business, mm -hmm. super important. Yeah. I'll throw that out there. Yeah. But, and um, I noticed that you guys have so many reviews. Like um, I actually didn't look into your Google reviews, but I saw on Facebook you have like 250 reviews. So it seems like not only do you have a ton of clients coming in and loving their experience, but it seems like you guys are also putting um, – putting an emphasis on getting reviews as well. Well, and we use GenBook for our um, booking system. They automatically follow up after 24 hours with the client asking them to write a review. Now that goes into GenBook. So in GenBook, we have over 500 reviews, um, but GenBook links with Google. Yeah. So again, there's different ways, but yes, reviews, 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 reviews drive business. Yeah. It's a referral from someone you don't know. Yeah, exactly. And like, you know, when you're on Google, you you know, where you appear on Google, first place, second place, 10th place on Google has a lot to do with how many reviews. So you're just going to have more fi more yeah. people finding you if you've got good reviews as well. For sure. Um, awesome. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Shauna, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming <laughs> on. It's been so enlightening and just a lovely conversation. I so appreciate you. I survived. You survived. And, and I appreciate you making me do this, Stephanie. Yeah. It, breaking out of my uh, shell here. So I appreciate it. Thank you. It was, it was probably a lot easier than you thought it was going to be, right? Well, I didn't have a panic attack, so it was great. It's always a great day <laughs> when that doesn't happen. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, uh, Shauna stepped out of her comfort zone to come with me in yeah. this uh, live video. And so pushing outside of her comfort zone, even, you know, as someone who's an experienced business owner, it's great to like try, be trying new things and pushing yourself out. And if I can just say one thing, live video is awesome. And I'm so glad that you guys were here watching with us. Uh, thanks everyone. Yeah, I thanks. love you girls. Thank you for your support. Yeah. Thank you for your comments and your questions. It's been so fun. All right, guys, I'll see you again here next week on my Facebook page for another Salon Marketing Live. 
And that was the end for Shauna, but <laughs> I'll see you guys again very soon. Talk to you all next week on Tuesday. Bye everyone.